This is the Zenslab tablet. Now the small version of the tablet, which is what I have here, comes in at 9.2 by 7.2 inches. And it comes with 8200 levels of pressure, which is pretty impressive to say the least. Now the Zenslab tablet isn't necessarily cheap, but the closest comparison to this would be the Wacom Intuos Pro, the small version, which uh, it also comes with 8200 levels of sensitivity, but it comes in at about $100 more than this tablet right here. Now prior to the Zenslab team reaching out to me to actually review this product, I had never heard of the company and uh, considering the price point, I'm actually really curious to see how this thing performs compared to the Intuos Pro, which is what I actually use on my day to day. So without further ado, let's see what this thing is made of. So the overall unboxing experience is actually really fantastic. You can tell a lot of care went into the packaging and the quality of production. When you open the box, right away you're presented with a nice thank you card where on the back there's instructions on how to set up your tablet, which is actually really simple. You just register it and plug it in. That's pretty much it and download the drivers. The tablet itself is really sleek and it has a really nice shape to it. The battery life is expected to last up to 16 hours with a 2.5 hour recharge time and you have three adjustable buttons at the top. Under the tablet you'll find a couple of things. One of them is a wire to let you actually charge the tablet or connect it via the wire. Another thing you'll find is the pen case and oh my god I love this thing. It's matte, it has a matte texture, uh, it has a really solid build, it has magnetic latches where it opens and closes very nicely and it feels good. And inside of it you have two pens to start with. You have a small pen with two buttons and a bigger pen with three buttons. And you have some different USB options to connect the tablet wirelessly to your computer. And you also get 10 extra nibs and on top of those 10 extra nibs each pen already has a nib in it so you're not going to run out of nibs anytime soon uh, you have six smooth nibs and then four textured ones to give you a more paper feel when you're using the stylus and underneath it all is the tablet case you get the tablet case is actually also really good quality uh, it has really nice stitching and you have strips of Velcro on each side for opening and closing it. You have one big pocket for the tablet and then a couple of smaller ones for the other gadgets that actually come with the tablet. Inside the big pocket where the tablet goes, uh, there's some really smooth velvet feeling. I don't know if it's exactly velvet, but it's super, super smooth in there. And overall the bag quality and just the entire packaging was very, very nicely done. So after going to the website and downloading the drivers, we get to this screen after installing it. Uh, this is the home page and if you come to pen tablet there's a bunch of options uh, you have the option to make the lights of the border dim bright or completely off if you want to save battery i'm going to leave mine on medium you can also change the color so you can go red green blue um, i'm going to leave mine at pink that looks pretty cool and then for the three button mouse the small pen doesn't actually have the three buttons, but the bigger pen does. So here you can set those, uh, you can change the pen pressure. We can test some of this stuff later. And if you go to advanced, you can actually change how it looks in the graph. It'll show you a visual of how that might look like. And then, uh, so that was for the three button pen, the big pen, this is the thin pen. Uh, you can have different settings for this pen as well. And for the two buttons, you can uh, change those here. I, I really love the UI of Zense Labs. This is this feels so much more intuitive than Wacom's, which is uh, or Wacom. <laughs> People are gonna make fun of me for the way I pronounce that. Uh, it just seems so much more intuitive than what I'm used to with the Wacom UI. And uh, I just noticed up here you can actually change your settings per profile. So it registered that I use Maya, it registered that I have Photoshop, and you can add more I assume there. And, I, and you can have different settings per program, or you can have a global setting for all other. Another thing for the pen tablet options, I don't know if Wacom has this, but I don't use it uh, if it does, but if it doesn't, it really needs it. So here we can make the tablet's right button 
actually switch the display. So if we're drawing on one screen, we can just click a button and then start drawing on the other screen, which it can, it can come in really handy. I've, I've had so many situations where I have to go back and resort to my mouse just to get something done because my tablet is only on one screen. So that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm just gonna use this poster as the background. It's our new poster for our animation course in the making. Uh, <laughs> hush, hush. Don't tell when I showed you this. I'm gonna add a layer on top and we're gonna go ahead and start drawing on a new layer. All right, so right away, there's a big delay on um, what I'm doing and what the tablet is doing, but I think I figured out the problem. There, I just took out my uh, wireless headset and now we're looking at this real time. So apparently my headset was actually interfering with the tablet because they're both wireless. Now, uh, this issue should, shouldn't be an issue if you connect your tablet, but uh, right now I'm using this wirelessly. And let's test out some of the sensitivity. Let's see how thin and how thick we can get. So this is how thick the brush is. And let me just thin it out a little bit. So I really like how smooth this is. Drawing on the tablet itself feels really nice. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch this out for the small controller or the small, excuse me, the small stylus. Let's see how the smaller stylus performs. Go pretty thin, so getting larger and larger and larger. Now let's do some uh, strokes. See how the tapers look on the strokes. That looks really nice actually. It looks better than what my Wacom can do. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. My Wacom always leaves a little, um, kind of looks like this, or rather, with a little doop at the end. This is, this is, this tapers really, really nicely, and it feels really, really smooth. So this is the smooth nibs. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the white nibs. Those are supposed to give more of a paper feel when you put those in. All right, now let's see how these ones feel. Oh, ho, 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 nice. This actually feels really, really nice. The white nibs make it feel like you're kind of drawing on paper. It has this rough feel to it. Honestly, I'm kind of blown away by the quality. Um, again, before this video, I had no idea ZenSlap existed. I didn't know anything about them uh, prior to them reaching out to me. So I wasn't really sure what kind of product to expect. But um, after testing out the tablet, it's, it's kind of clear that they're putting a lot of effort into making their product a premium quality. Um, I haven't seen any bad things to say. The only hiccup I ran into was actually just in the very beginning where my headset was interfering with the tablet because they're both uh, wireless. But once I unplug that, it's real time. There's no issues. And uh, both the pens and the nibs feel really, really good. The tablet is nice and light and slim. There's customizable options on both the pens and the tablet. There isn't really much else you could really ask for. But again, for a small tablet, the price point is fairly high. But again, compared to the Wacom counterpart, this tablet is actually $100 cheaper. And in my opinion, they're the same quality. I have the Intuos Pro Medium and um, this one is going after the, in, the Intuos Pro Small. They also have a medium version, which is supposed to uh, go against the medium version of Intuos Pro. But um, this actually comes with more options, uh, comes with more nibs, more pens, and a lot more options, and at a cheaper price. And so far, I've only been testing this out for about a day, so it hasn't, hasn't been an extensive testing, but so far from what I've seen, I, I don't really have anything negative to say and it is on par with the infamous Wacom tablets. So in the end, it's entirely up to you whether what your needs are. If you're a hobbyist that just needs a tablet to do some basic needs, this may not be for you. But if you're looking for a tablet that is very high sensitivity and um, quality, ZenSlap could be a solid choice. Especially if you were thinking of getting it into as pro, uh, this could be an option for you at slightly cheaper price. Per usual, I'll have links for everything that we talked about in the description. And lastly, before I go, if you're an animator who's been wanting to learn Blender, we're actually launching our comprehensive Blender Basics course on June 12th, 2022. 
So that's less than a month away from when this video is uploaded. If you're interested in that, check out 2animate.ca for more info and sign up for our email list to be notified of the release. With all that out of the way, happy animating and I'll see you in the next video.